Friends, it's so good to be here. If you've been with me before on this platform, then you've heard me many, many times, likely, acknowledge how much I love working with this team of people. It's definitely my favorite, favorite place to teach, favorite platform. So thank you. Thank you for your support of the, the platform and for the continuation of these teachings. It feels a little bit like coming home because for quite a while I did those morning uh, meditations through Sangha Live. So thanks for those of you saying hello there on the sidebar. Um, so many of your names I recognize. And I do hope to jump right in to the meditation today because I'd love for as much time as possible to be dedicated to us getting to in a sense, catch up a little bit. Um, if you're new, welcome, it's fine. If, if we haven't gotten to have an exchange before, um, but I know for many of you, it's, it's my opportunity to hear how practice is going for you, especially if you haven't been able to join some of the things I've been offering through Presence Collective. So with that, before I move into a half an hour long meditation, I wanted to invite folks to say a little something in the sidebar about what you're present to in this moment. So name, if you would, what you're coming in with. What are you bringing into this practice space today? What's alive for you now? There's no wrong answer. Deborah, receptive, feeling blessed, appreciation for impermanence. That's noteworthy, isn't it, Charlie? Not fear of impermanence in this moment, but appreciation of it a full and raw heart, bliss, worry, realization, busy morning, a little bit of restlessness, working with anxiety, just a bit tired, happy for the rest, quietness, feet on the floor, COVID fatigue, feeling resourced and grateful after powerful until freedom rally yesterday, joy, tired after a busy day, Returning to practice after a break, looking forward to getting back into it. Great, Caroline. Fatigue, a sense of being here now, enjoying the season, Joyce. A lonely heart, mind like wild horses. Insecure, hope to find peace in the midst of uncertainty, gratefulness. Gratitude for this and online Sangha, but also excessive pressure from work producing anxiety energetic with hopes to stillness. Distracted, feeling late. You're not late, we're just getting rolling, Ben. Emptiness. Friends, thank you. Lovely. It's a beautiful, sunny, cool day in Maine. After a long day of rain, a bumbling bee saying hello, nature soothing me in this chaotic time. Julian, hello, you're available for what is here, me too. Me too, scattered mind. One of the reasons I love doing that so much is hopefully you can feel as folks write in on the sidebar, your own capacity to hold whatever's here, to be with each other's uh, comments. It's likely that you're not resisting or rejecting what other people are experiencing. Although in your own conditioned system, you might be rejecting something you're experiencing. So just take note of that if that's true. Or maybe subtly resisting, maybe rejection is too strong of a term. Election exhaustion, unemployed, a heart beating too much. So yes, we're all here together held in now. So with that, 
Let's sit, please. Let's allow our bodies and minds to rest together. Let's begin this meditation by taking three of the longest and deepest inhalations and exhalations you've taken yet today. In this moment, Allow yourself to feel the cleansing nature of the breath without having to adjust the breath. You don't need to do anything to the breath, in other words, for the breath to do what the breath naturally does, which is clear, cleanse, release. Take in, absorb, accept with each inhalation. And with each exhalation. We're in such um, a time of upheaval, as many people are noting in the sidebar this morning. And in such times of upheaval, it can be helpful at the beginning of your sitting practice to find an anchor. You might choose the breath. You might choose sounds around you. You might choose sensations in the body. For a few moments, pick one anchor. This is a way to steady the attention. Pick one anchor and stick with it for a few moments. So the attention wanders off, you notice where it goes, you might label it, and you come back to your anchor.
And now notice for a moment what the attention, as it focuses on a specific anchor, notice what the attention is arising out of. From a place of gentle inquiry, just notice Where's the attention? Coming from? If you imagine the long arm of an octopus reaching out from the body of that being and, and touching whatever your anchor is. So this arm of the octopus is like the attention. It's reaching out. It's touching the breath or sensation or sound. For this part of the meditation, allow that tendril to release its hold on that object, the object being the anchor. Release the anchor and allow that arm of this being to gently rest back into the body of this being. The octopus in this moment, a metaphor for awareness. So now, rather than holding, touching, attending to any specific anchor, you're resting in your own being for a bit. You're releasing any tension that is a byproduct of the reaching for anything. You're releasing the body. You're releasing the mind. Releasing energetically. So releasing the attention. You're free. 
freeing the attention to rest. In consciousness itself, to rest in awareness. Simply being aware of being aware. If your mind is very busy and active, you could choose to go back to the anchor concentration practice if that feels steadying. Or you could simply notice that this open space of awareness has plenty of room for busy mind. You don't need to do anything with busy mind. You don't need to control it, fix it, change it. You are like the open sky that has plenty of room. For the activity of the mind. For emotions that arise. You are the open sky that has plenty of room for everything. So allow the mind now to rest in the heart of awareness. Allow yourself to be held in this openness. You are this openness. the very nature of your being.
openness. Nowhere you have to go, nothing you have to do, no one you have to be in order to know, in order to realize that truth. Just quietly allowing the attention to rest in its source, in its home, in its body. Just resting in the inherent stillness of your own being. Just resting in the, the luminosity of your own being.
rest in the heart of awareness. Your true nature. Not something you access through striving or trying. But the very backdrop out of which all arises. Awareness itself.
friends. Thank you. So grateful to be in presence with you today. Before I move even more deeply into today's theme, today's theme already was unfolding in the meditation, but before I move even more deeply in, I do want to pause to remind you to support these teachings, please. I love that Sangha Live makes it easy. Crowdcast makes it easy. You've got that little green donate button right, right below me. Caroline mentioned it at the beginning of this call, but it, it's, it's not an exaggeration to say that we can't continue without your generous support. So thank you for anything you can give, for everything you can give, including your presence. So today, thank you, Charlie. Glad you're here. Today, the Udana Sutta. I hadn't heard this sutta before a long time ago. And then um, Jeff, who's the insight head of the uh, Charlottesville Insight Meditation Community, and I did a retreat together not too long ago, a weekend retreat. And I appreciated so much he brought this teaching back into my awareness. Thank you, Sheila. So I wanted to start by reading this sutta to you, this very profound sutta. For one who clings, motion exists. But for one who does not cling, there is no motion. Where there is no motion, there is stillness. And where stillness is, there is no craving. Where no craving is, there's no coming nor going. Where no coming or going is, there's no rising or passing away. There's neither this world nor a world beyond, nor a state between. This, verily, is the end of suffering. May we, may we turn now with great dedication to these teachings that remind us that our, our true identity is without identity teachings that remind us that our true nature is unborn, undying, infinite, not coming, not going. And that's not the same as ignoring or rejecting identity. It's not the same as bypassing all that's happening in the world. But this teaching reminds us that we are that which inherently and fundamentally can be with all that is, we are all that is. So practice becomes an opportunity. It's an offering. It offers us a way to remember who we truly are. And practice guides us home to this, this home that's pointed to in the sutta. It seems to me that we're in such an important time and uh, a time, I should say, 
in which it's important to view practice as a way of remembrance. Yes, Jerome, empty of a separate self. Eva, thank you. Restoring beautiful practice, feeling blessed. That, that experience of feeling blessed is the way we might describe reuniting with true nature. Of course, we're not really reuniting with anything because true nature is ever present. But that's why I bring this word remembrance in today. We're remembering what is ever present. I'd like to read this sutta one more time, and then I would just be tickled pink to have an exchange with anyone, everyone who would like to. So here is this Dana Sutta. For one who clings, motion exists. So important to see how that clinging and, and motion are in relationship with each other, yes? For one who does not cling, there's no motion. Can you see how that suggests that there is no separate self it gives rise to the appearance of something that is its opposite. When there's no motion, there is stillness. When there's stillness, there's no craving. Craving doesn't come from Stillness. Craving comes from the illusion of a self that is separate from life, that, that sees itself in opposition to something else, therefore longs to go get what that something else is. Cling, grab, hold. Where no craving is, there's neither coming nor going. Again, this is pointing out what arises when we see things in terms of opposites, and we only see things in terms of opposites through the lens of the separate self. Where no coming or going is, there's no rising or passing away. There's neither this world nor a world beyond, and this is important, nor a world in between. So it's not as though this duality that arises based on us being identified with the illusion of a separate self is the duality is illusory, but this space in between is real. To view it that way assumes that the duality is quote unquote real. Yes, Jerome, Thich Nhat Hanh, no after, no before. Rachel, no motion toward the past or future. Welcome, Mimosa. Heather, arriving home, beautiful. I'm glad to hear this is resonating. And if this isn't resonating, no worries. I hope we'll chat in just a moment. So there's no rising nor passing away. There's neither this world nor a world beyond, nor a, a state between. This, verily, is the end of suffering. This, this recognition that we are not a separate self that is viewing the world through the lens 
of duality, through the lens of coming or going, craving, rejecting, avoiding. That's why in the meditation I use this image of the open sky. What shifts for you in your own practice when you recognize yourself as the openness out of which all of these other things arise? That is the question. Closing out our sutta there. That, that is our question today that I open with what arises for you, making room in all of that openness, Helen, beautiful. And it's lovely, isn't it? In this practice of remembrance, we see ourselves as we remember ourselves, we recognize ourselves as that which doesn't even need to make room for anything. What a relief to remember that practice isn't something we do. That it's not something we achieve. That the state we long for isn't a state at all. It's the very nature of our being. The state we long for isn't a state at all. It's the very nature of our being. So friends, tell me, what do you notice about this? What's, what's true for you? in this moment about this. It's hard to forget something I remembered. Yes, I think if I'm following you, you're acknowledging that something we remember is something that is, it's, it's, it's in us. We've had the experience. That can't be taken away from us. allowing the room to naturally dissolve thoughts or other past future concepts, as well as if when our focus is more grounded. Yes, you know, this, um, yes, good, Lane, thank you. Yes, this is why I started with a concentration practice today. When you're free, you're free to move in any direction. You're free to respond to what's called for in the moment. And your palette of how to respond is vast. I see some questions in the question box, so I will look, I will tend to those now. Caroline. And I want to invite, again, my, my favorite way to respond to questions is if you're open to coming on screen. So just, uh, yes, please let Caroline know. You can put it in the question box or, or if you'd like to come on screen, just let Caroline know. Again, I, I just love getting to have direct exchange because it allows me to meet you where you are. It's a little trickier to do that through text, but I, I definitely will give it my best. Caroline. If I have a thought, I am not that thought, but I am the awareness that I'm having that thought. Caroline, if, if you were on screen, I would ask you to tell me how that lands for you. Does that feel so to you as I read it back to you? So I'm going to just read it again, and maybe you can put in the chat bar what you notice. If I have a thought, I'm not that thought, but I am the awareness that I'm having that thought. OK, 
Carolyn, I, I don't see a comment and no pressure. It's fine if you don't wish, wish to comment on that in this moment. I'll just cut to the chase and say, yes, absolutely. Here's what's exciting to me. If I have an emotion, I am not that emotion, but I am the awareness that that emotion exists. So good, Caroline, here you are. I feel a space between myself and the thought. Now, this is where it gets quite fun. Carolyn, you remember in this little Dharma talk, if you want to call it that, that I acknowledged that our true identity is without identity. So we might ask, when you say, I feel a space between myself and the thought, and I trust you're already asking this because you put that in quotes, myself. So we can ask, so what is, what am I referring to when I say myself? It's a valuable question for all of us. What are we referring to when we say ourselves? When you say I, what are you referring to? Are you referring to this conglomeration of thoughts that you have every day? Are you referring to the emotions you have? Are you referring to this body mind? What are you referring to? Abbas, not so much a question, but a comment, would say why, especially now it is so crucial, we decide solitude so that we can engage with the world creatively. Please talk a bit about the value of choosing solitude at this particular time. Thank you, Abbas. Thank you very much for that. I don't recall acknowledging the value of solitude in this session, but I'm happy to talk about the value of solitude. I love the philosopher, I believe it was Pascal, said all the world's problems are caused by man's inability to sit alone in a room with himself. So many of us, and I remember someone wrote in the chat bar today, loneliness. Many of us are conditioned, we're habituated to link being alone with loneliness. I love the, the word solitude because for me it implies it points to the richness that comes from being with ourselves. And again, now we must go back to, well, what self are we talking about? So when I, when I do speak about solitude, I'm not referring to the solitude of simply being by yourself, this body mind, not near other body minds. I'm referring to the solitude, the solo nature of the one unified experience of being that we call I. We're all referring to the same unified field of being when we say I. The ego distorts that experience and frames that view of I as a separate, isolated experience. It calls this felt sense of being me and then tries to possess it. But the truest solitude to me is actually referring to the solitary, to the, to the experience of oneness, solo oneness. 
the true solitude is the way to speak to the experience that's not divided, not even divisible. And that is our very being. Joel. Oh, let's see. One, there's someone right above Joel. Uh, let's see. Caroline, it feels like an absence of anything. I can't label it. Beautiful. Yes, the I, the now I mean I, the ego, can't label it. Well, it tries to, but it's not an accurate experience. It's not truthful. Because there is no separation in reality. Joel, you offer a Rupert Spira quote. I is the continuous element of all experience. And that this I knows itself simply by being itself. Beautiful, timely quote given today's teaching. I knows itself simply by being itself. I, this experience of oneness, this awake oneness knows itself through itself and by itself. Abbas, as long as we have a limbic system, we will have an idea of a self like an old friend. Yes, you could view it like an old friend as long as you realize you are not that isolated, separate, limbic system. You are not cut off. You are not other than life, consciousness, awareness. Rachel, I appreciate remembering that it is unwise to associate my identity with negative emotions I experienced. Excellent. I, I, as many folks on this call know, I'm the founder of a nonprofit called Peace in Schools, along with the nonprofit called Presence Collective, which hosts a, a variety of wisdom teachers from different tr traditions. In Peace in Schools, it's touching to me how often teens, we, we created the first semester long mindfulness course in public high schools. Uh, credited course. And it's so touching to me how often teens find great liberation from that, that insight. It's powerful to watch that insight land, that it's so different to say, I am feeling sadness, or sadness is moving through me, versus I am this sadness. There's actually a very touching video of one of our teens naming that specific insight. If you just go to the Peace in Schools website and you, it's peaceinschools.org and you, you look for the video called Into Light. It's only 12 minutes or so. It was made by wonderful filmmakers in LA. Or you could Google Into Light Peace in Schools or Into Light Wavecrest Films. But it's very sweet to watch this teen, Mad Maddie, Madeline, have that very insight. It's fun to to, to hear her describe it. So thank you, Rachel. So true. Eva, our body, thoughts, and feelings are forever changing. The only thing that is permanent and unchanging is our awareness of those. Awareness is permanent and unchanging. To me, is the true essence, I, us, you. Lovely articulation. And apologies, I don't know if it's Eva or Eva, but lovely articulation. Thank you. Charlie, you'd love to come on screen. Great. Please do. Yes, that's great. Um, and then uh, Sangha Live. So, Carolyn, you say, I'll invite Leon, Lean, who's asked a question, and then you. Perfect. So I will wait to see. Beautiful. Okay, you're okay to come on screen. Lean, wonderful. 
while I'm waiting for you to come on screen, I'll just read what you've written here. I remembered my oneness a while ago, feeling peaceful and still and okay with things as they were, whatever they were. And for a while now, I'm clinging to things again, resisting some things, suffering. And I would like so much to go back to this non-resistance and okayness. It's frustrating that I'm not managing. So good, I hope, well, not good that you're frustrated. <laughs> not good that, a frustrating, a frustration is arising in you. You are not that which is frustrating, frustrated. Um, so let's see if you can come on screen. Thank you. Caroline, maybe just give us a little note on the sidebar if you're just working on it. Oh, okay, you've, you've invited. So Lean, I hope I'm saying your name right. I think you just have to click accept. I make it sound so easy, but it can be complicated. I, I, I hope it's that simple for you. Okay, well, okay, yes, Lean, are you able to accept? Here we go, the invitation. Yes. Hello, and can you tell me how to say your name? Lean. Lean. Yes. Where, where are you calling from? Uh, from Brussels. I'm a Dutch speaker, that's a Dutch name. Beautiful and wonderful welcome. Thank you. It was a little bit difficult practically to come on screen. That's why it took a while. Um, no problem. I It gives us an, all an opportunity to meditate. <laughs> so te tell me a little bit more about your um, awareness of, yes, what you've described. Um, yeah, it's like uh, in uh, the beginning of the year, this, this year, there were these moments where I really experienced this yeah, what you what what you talked about is when the, the sutta, this feeling of oneness, and I found it very very liberating. These these this period, this time, um, like that I could see that that yeah, that the suffering wasn't really real. I mean, it was there, but it wasn't. Uh, I could just like I was like, wow, this is, and I could just be with things the way they were. Uh, it was very. Um, like even if there were difficult things, I felt they were just passing through, and then there was just I was just so present these this these these months that it was it was just okay the way it was. It was yeah, it was so simple and so wonderful. And yeah, it's a little while now that this is completely <laughs> gone again, and it's very frustrating, and especially because I've experienced this, and it's like I know it like wanting it back is not going to help me but i feel that i i yeah i feel this longing to go back to this way of being and 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 um yeah but this just i'm clinging to certain things and i'm um i mean i i kind of think that it's just like again something else that is coming up to be seen and uh to be felt to go through but um i i think i mean and, and I know it probably doesn't work this way, but I would like to find a shortcut. <laughs> you're, you're speaking to the right person because I believe deeply in the shortcut. And what I mean by that, yeah, what I mean by that is I, I trained in, in a monastic tradition that was not the shortcut. It was, it was the long, it was a long road and I, I don't regret a moment of that. I, I, I have so much gratitude for the way that I was trained to approach practice. But when I would have experiences like the one you described, I would tell myself a story unconsciously, but I would tell myself, I would have a, an unconscious narrative that suggested that I could only get back to that place through my diligence, through my hard work, through my efforting, through my, my, my practice. And I say it with clenched fists for a reason. Mm. Can you feel how much, as you hear me describe that, it keeps 
a practitioner in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I yeah, can also see that myself. Sorry, I'm interrupting you. Yes, but I don't. I, I'm sorry. I'm. I also see that about myself that I, I I do this like because I want to go back to something. Well, I know it's not there, but it's here. But I I keep on doing this. I don't know how to not do this. Of course, and here's the good news. You will keep on doing this forever because when, in that you, in this, the way I'm using you in that sentence, could also be stated, the ego will keep doing that forever. And that's not a problem. It's actually not a problem that the, that the sense of being separate will always grasp for what it feels it doesn't have. Mm -hmm. So the shortcut, the shortcut is allowing the insight you had to be something that you remember rather than try to go get. And your insight was, I, and I'm using slightly different words, but this is what you named to me. I realized I'm not that which suffers. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. We focus so much on suffering in Buddhist practice. Mm -hmm. And there's not often as much talk about the importance of recognizing we aren't that which suffers. So we get busy trying to end suffering. Oh, yeah. So what if right now this is the shortcut what if right now you saw that dance of clinging grabbing gripping trying to have as simply yet another appearance arising in the vastness of you mm -hmm. you pure consciousness you awareness Not you, this this little thing that that had something and it was really great, but now doesn't have it, and then has to try to get it again, but can't get it again. So has to try to practice harder, then gets beaten up for not being able to repeat the experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I can feel something about it when you say it. It's like I also realize when you talk about this that I'm making it wrong that I'm that I'm trying to find it and in fact there's nothing wrong with it it's just another movement that is happening another thing that is happening in all of this like I, when you talk about i feel like something is becoming more large again like uh, uh. yes we every time we feel ourselves grasping for it you, we could say instead of like oh no i know the right answer i've read suttas the right answer is not grasping and clinging of course i know that rather than that self-hating cycle we could simply say, thank you. That feeling, I could also call, like a Sufi might call it a longing for the beloved. So we could celebrate. This would change our inner dynamic around trying to get to that state, wouldn't it? We could just celebrate, ah, I mean, I'll put it in the most crude terms. I can only crave chocolate. I can only long for chocolate after a meal because I know chocolate. I know the pleasure of chocolate. Thank you. What an amazing thing that I'm living a life where I know that pleasure. Mm. Right? That's the most simple way. So do you feel how different that is energetically than saying like, why, why am I longing for chocolate again? What is wrong with me? Why can't I just mm -hmm. stop craving? Why can't I? We could just say this longing is uh, the call. Like if I were a Christian mystic, I could say, oh, this longing is, is the call of God. It's the call of the angels through heaven. Yeah, it's touching me when you say that, in fact. 
it's it's a very different way of feeling into it. The 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 feeling could be viewed as an indicator that we know home. Mm -hmm. That home that you're describing is inherent. It cannot be taken from you. If you feel like it's missing, rather than focusing on trying to get it, focus on recognizing that you must be identified with that which sees itself as separate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let it become a mirror. Mm -hmm. But remember your own insight. You are not that which suffers. You are not that which clings. You are not that which is coming or going or has things taken from you or can be tarnished by experiences of the world. Yeah, I find it uh, very beautiful. So when you say like this longing is like a calling, it's very beautiful. It changes the way we'll be in relationship with it. If we feel that longing and we realize, oh, sweetheart, some sweetheart is feeling separate from God. Or again, use whatever language works for you. There's this little drop of water. It feels separate from the ocean. But this water, it's, it is the ocean. It's, it's the same suchness. May I, may I take that little drop of water to the sea? May I, may I be that which reunites it? Rather than, why, why can't you get back to the ocean? Why, why do you cling for the experience of the ocean? You're just a little drop of water. <laughs> yeah, that's really what happens, huh? this kind of critical voice and uh, like, or uh, angry or, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the most important thing about what you're realizing today around that is, it'd be one thing if that critical voice led us to the experience we longed for. How so? In other words, that critical voice that says, why can't you just have this experience again or whatever? It would be one thing if that critical voice helped us have that experience again. I, but, yeah. mm -hmm. but it just veils the experience more fully. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it, it in fact blocks the experience. And the reason it blocks the experience is because what it reinforces is the idea that you are separate from your very being. Mm -hmm. And that is the source of suffering. Mm -hmm. yeah. That someone or something could separate you from your very being. Your natural state is actually the experience of your insight. Everything else is a veiling of that. Mm -hmm. That's also good to remember that all the rest is a veiling of, of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think the word veiling is important because it, 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 it shows that it's nothing permanent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know it's true, in fact. I mean, even though like I forget, but I know it's true because I, I have seen it this way. Yes, you've had the experience. Once you've tasted chocolate, you can't untaste it. No, you've had the experience. Mm. And then the longing becomes even bigger. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. So we can say, oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I would really worry if I had no longing because I had no awareness that there was something other than this experience of perceiving myself as separate. That, in fact, 
is how one might describe a sociopath. I'm no psychiatrist, but it seems to me that when we're speaking about sociopaths, we're speaking about people that truly can't get beyond the idea that they are, have no glimpse of anything other than they are this separate ego self. I don't know. I don't know either, but it seems so in the moment, at least to me. And again, I'm not a professional when it comes to being a psychiatrist, but I, but we all know that experience of feeling that, of feeling cut off. And aren't we lucky that if you're on this call, you know the experience of not being cut off. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be on a call like this mm -hmm. if that weren't something you had tasted. So what are you what are you present to now? Um, I'm um, yeah. These these things that you said are going a bit through me. I'm, I'm uh, and I'm I'm very happy I went on this call because it, I feel like a, a bit like it's like I'm a little bit reconnecting and I'm thinking of the things you said about um, yeah the Sufi word of the beloved and the chocolate and then the <laughs> all these things are going a bit <laughs> lots of things. <laughs> You got lots of water, chocolate, the beloved. You have much more, don't you? Yeah. It's a, like a whole thing to take with me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming on. It's lovely to meet you. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. We've got some comments here in the sidebar. Uh, It, Mark, it feels like I, as the self gets pulled by habit into believing the idea I have about myself, which suffers from the idea it has about itself. <laughs> well said. It's important to see how self-fulfilling that prophecy, isn't it? And how self-referencing. Carissa, lean, you're in good company. Thank you for being brave and asking this question. Beautiful. Longing for the beloved, Abbas reflects to us. Charlie, the critical voice is the design flaw in our infinite being. Abbas Rumi describes it in, oops, that just popped up. Rumi describes it in an old Persian myth where 30 birds set out to find this queen bird known mythically as 30, 30 bird not realizing they are her. The realization comes to them after a lot of suffering and a few of them die trying. Thank you. Thank you for offering that. Abba said is beautiful, John says, Mimosa, thank you both. Laura, thank you for your comment. Okay, beautiful. Okay, Christopher. And then I just wanted to see, I think, Charlie, you were going to come on after. So, um, Caroline, I'm ready whenever you are, if, if Charlie would like to come on. Um, uh, Turid, thank you immensely. Evelyn, yeah, thank you. Sharon, good, good to see you here today, feel you here today. Thank you for thanking me and... So Christopher, I'll just read this while I'm waiting to see if Charlie can join us. I was once again amazed by how quickly I was guided back to a calm and deeper state of mind. Thank you, Caverly, and thank you for pointing it out again and again. Each time making the state steadier. Yes, that's an important thing to name, Christopher. We come back again and again and we stabilize our experience. We stabilize our remembrance of who we authentically are. Each time making the state steadier related to the current discussion, it's probably from me, not all the expecting it to be able to happen. When you and I have a lot of expectations, suddenly it can happen.
Just reading that again, Christopher. When you and I have a lot... Oh, okay, I read it wrong. Thank you. Oh, because I was not quite tracking that, but now I am. When you, I have let go of expectations suddenly, it can happen. Yes, absolutely. Now I'm with you, indeed. I <laughs> loved the chocolate analogy. Oh, good. I'm glad. I am. I'm a fan. All right, friends, let's see. Yes, any luck, Charlie, Caroline's asking. Just looking at our question box here. It's a little tricky for me to see if these are questions I've answered yet. Okay, let's see if it works. You've accepted the invite. Andrea, thank you. Have loved it. And the octopus, you know, it's funny. Um, you 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 acknowledge, you know, have you seen my uh the octopus teacher, the a film? And yes, if if anyone follows me on uh Instagram, you know that I rarely like give film suggestions, but I loved that film so much it felt um important to shout out to the world about it. So um, yeah, please uh, check that out if you want to see it on Netflix. My octopus uh, teacher. It's beautiful. It's lovely. It's nice to see a film like that during these times that can feel somewhat dark or uh, maybe overwhelming. Okay, so I see Charlie, you're having a little trouble coming on. Um, no worries. I hope it happens soon. I'll meanwhile read these questions. Um, not so much a question, but a comment. Um, would say why, especially now, it's so... Okay, I've answered that. That's the um, solitude question. Okay. Um, okay, and then Leanne's question's there, but I think we've answered that. And then is your... Uh, okay, Caroline. Okay, I haven't addressed this one yet. Oh, Charlie, let's see if anyone else wants to spend time with Caverly. Yes, please. Is there anyone else that would like to come on? Caroline, is your I separate to mine? I don't understand this with respect to duality and oneness. Are we all the same entity? Are you, are you able by chance to come on, Caroline? I totally honor it if you can't. It would be lovely to chat if you can. You are uh, accurately you are accurately recognizing the core of today's teaching, Caroline. If our true identity is without identity without identity, Oh, good, Caroline, you can come on. This will be much more interesting with you here um, rather than me just talking at you. So we'll see. We'll see if this works for you to come on screen. But as you do come on screen, I can just acknowledge yes. Oh, your device doesn't support it. Okay, no worries. Hopefully this won't... Um, this won't feel too much like I'm talking at you. I'll do my best with that. So yes, you're correct. You're correct, Caroline. And I also just saw our time. So I, I want to honor people's time. So I will be brief with this. We are at our time. But I want to acknowledge, yes, you are absolutely touching the core of today's teaching. What is being suggested is that our very being is shared, that we are not the separate self that we often identify with. And that we're, when we're identified with a separate self, the world appears a particular way. The world 
appears as something that's arising that is other than us. So just because of our time, I'll leave it at that. But yes, Caroline, yes. Friends, I just can't thank you enough for being with me today. I wanted to give a big shout out, given today's theme in particular to this little book, a kid's book about mindfulness. It is not at all just for kids. I like to say it's for ages nine through 109. And it's, um, if, if you enjoyed today, then you, you will enjoy this book. This book, you know, asks questions like, who are you? And this book points out, Caroline, definitely um, get this book if you're up for it. This book points, points out that, that we are not our thoughts. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a book that, that actually for young people offers a way to begin to ask this line of inquiry regarding who we truly are, what's actually real, what's actually true. What is this knowing of ourselves that transcends clinging and aversion coming and going? Thank you so much, friends. Thanks for saying goodbye on the sidebar. And again, I want to thanks Sangha Live. I just love this platform and I'm also thrilled to announce that I'm going to offer um, the uh, Awakening to the New Year course that I filmed with Sangha Live in the past it, in January. Um, uh, so at the beginning of next year, it's been decided I'll do that and I cannot recommend this course enough. We're, we're running it again because it's just so packed with um, tools and um, has this undercurrent of remembrance that uh, if, yes, if you've been on this call today and, and that way I've approached the sutta has spoken to you, you'll, you'll love that, that course. So I hope you'll join me there. Um, again, my, my, uh, my name is Caverly Morgan and, and my URL is simple, caverlymorgan.org. And I would love to see you at an upcoming practice I'm offering. And, and thank you. Thank you for being here. Shane, you hadn't been on Sangha Live for a bit. Um, and I'm glad that you found this to be a pleasure. Great. Okay. Friends, thank you. Thank you and much love.